I immediately pressed to see how things were and it actually felt quite poisonous almost. Over the weekend when it peaked, I'll, I'll show you some pictures, it really got quite ugly. It made me very tense and... Um, So a couple of days ago, I completed my five day fast. I was inspired somewhat by Kerry from Homestead Howe and Jeff De Prosperous from Blessings on My Journey. So shout out to you guys. Yeah, keep reading. I obviously had my own reasons for doing the fast. The main one being a skin condition that I actually developed a few months back, pyoderma gangrenosum, and it can be really quite serious and debilitating. What happened was I prodded around my abdomen and felt a little bit of tenderness, and I thought perhaps I'd placed the bag on wrong, which is kind of unusual because I'm really quite particular about things. It just looked a little bit inflamed, didn't really think much of it. The following morning, I immediately pressed to see how things were and it actually felt quite poisonous almost, like very tender and bruised. So again, took the bag off and I could actually see that it was definitely worse. There was um, almost like signs of a lesion, developing lesion. This actually got progressively worse over the course of days. A couple of times when I was laying down sleeping, I could feel stinging. And so I thought, okay, well, what I'm going to do from this point onwards is sleep on the couch. So I'm upright. That way, when things start, to work during the night that won't encroach on that irritated area and make it worse but things weren't really improving so I took myself up to the hospital to see some stoma nurses a couple of them said pyoderma but a couple of them were like I'm not, I'm not too sure but either way why don't you go down to your doctor and confirm and get a proper diagnosis she referred me to a dermatologist procedures at the moment is pretty much you know take a picture send it and then about four days later you get your diagnosis well I timed it quite badly because I think this was Thursday when I sent the pictures off and it was around about four working days until you get your answer. So Friday came and things were really looking quite ugly. It was very, very painful. Just the whole process of changing, cleaning, it made me very tense and um, before leading up to this point, I could gently clean and, and when I put the bag over the top, it was almost a relief. But this time it made me think about certain films when they're kind of digging the bullet out of their arm. It genuinely felt like that. The sensitivity was unreal. Just to place anything on it, I didn't have any proper dressing or anything at the time, so I was trying to place the bag nice and high, but even when you put the bag on it, it was very, very painful. And there was about a 45 minute period afterwards where I would feel these very sharp stabbing pains that felt like, and I think this is what was happening, it was almost like splits and cracks and this lesion would just open up and develop even more. What I did, and this was maybe two and a half months ago or something like that, I did a three day fast, almost a three day fast, and things turned enough to get me out of trouble. This lesion, if you like, had kind of healed over enough that it wasn't excruciating to clean it wasn't too bad so I think it was Tuesday that following week I got my answer back confirmed pyoderma gangrenosum so they had prescribed me antibiotics and a couple of steroid creams and the antibiotics were strong and the first cream that they advised me to use was, was very strong the idea of an ointment so the second steroid cream was like an ointment and I'll show you that actually so it's basically 0.05% of that particular steroid per every one gram, which obviously I wasn't using anywhere near that much because I felt like I'd got myself out of that peak level where it kind of started to heal over a little bit. I chose to just very gently apply a very small amount of this. It was quite nice though, just to be able to apply some ointment, which was quite soothing and acted like a protective barrier. And then on top of that, the dressing and which I could place more accurately. And then the bag over the top of that. My stress came down, stuck with one meal a day, stayed on the couch, get as much sleep as I could no dairy and the combination of that did seem to work and I'll show you some progress but I did seem to hit a point uh, where it just plateaued and this uh, very small amount of skin wasn't really healing over and it seemed to stay that way and it would kind of move around and different holes and things almost appeared in different places but it just wasn't getting better past that point so hence the five day fast. My thoughts were that I wanted to do as long as possible but I set myself a challenge for five days. I uh, wasn't too sure about how it would go because obviously my unique situation with not having a colon maybe other people that do have a colon they're reuptaking water and electrolytes in their colon for that first couple of days of fasting where my last meal and I chose to eat a hell of a lot just in preparation to fast that one meal was out of my system by the time I went to bed that night so my very first day of my fast I was completely empty I was obviously having to make sure that I was staying on top of electrolytes and I did that by fortifying my water the night before for the next day with a combination of Celtic and Himalayan salt which would then mineralize and alkalize the water for the next day and then I just sipped when thirsty or if I got a craving 
just take a sip of water, keep yourself busy. I went to work as usual. Um, I was making the effort to be active and, and stay occupied, to only change once a day and also to not apply as much ointment. So my strategy really was to try and heal by hopefully getting into autophagy. My body can concentrate on healing up my skin condition while I wean off the steroids because I think many of us know steroids they can be quite a miraculous treatment while you're on them but it's a bit of an illusion you know often when you cut them out all your results they just disappear i don't want to be permanently on steroid creams and ointments and things like that the first day was a breeze obviously i'm used to having one meal a day most of the time go to sleep wake up next day comes day two was much the same really uh, i don't usually eat in the morning anymore so um, i had loads of energy going to work up until midday and i didn't really dip came home tended to other things went to bed woke up and into day three again the morning not a problem I did notice a slight dip in energy towards the afternoon, just slowed down a little bit and then it all kind of picked up again. I actually took myself over to Noel Park and did some sprints. I did a few sets of sprints, which made me feel, if anything, more energized. I felt better and, and actually I started going down these hills and running up the hills. I was certainly in very high grade ketosis and my glucose was way, way low. I even checked my ketones on this old uh, urinary analysis with the keto sticks. So I just basically peed into a cup and dipped my stick in and it came out at around about a 10-ish, I would say at least a 10. And so I was quite happy thinking that I was doing the right things. You get all these sort of miraculous healing benefits, autophagy, mitophagy, reading dead organelle within the cells, maybe fat my organs, but most importantly, treating and healing my skin condition. I do believe that being active is important as well. I think it's a good way to maintain muscle tissue. Anyway, I went into the fourth day. I definitely noticed a dip in energy, um, a little bit more in the morning, but definitely by the time midday came. So again, I just took it really slow at work. But funnily enough, the energy came back again. Um, and knowing that I was about to break my fast in sort of the next 24 hours, I started doing more exercise. So I was out in the garden, and skipping and you know jump rope um, I was even doing sort of uh, shadow boxing and body weight squats push-ups right towards the end I actually started to feel really good and by the time day five came it was like Christmas morning because I woke up thinking like I get to eat today you know I usually take myself down to Chart Farm on that day anyway and so I get all my fish and my meat I stocked up the fridge I did buy quite a fair amount of food actually but that was in mind of the whole weekend as well I've just got through all of that food now I was quite stubborn I wanted to wait until 1 p.m you know on the fifth day get to 1 p.m that's five days I knew I was going to take it really slow and gently obviously I, I wasn't going to consume any carbohydrates which is a huge error when people break prolonged fast I was going to just focus on pure fat. So I did actually start by eating just some pure fat off the ribeye. And then I went on to having some butter. <laughs> and then I went on to having some butter with salmon. So the salmon's obviously higher in fat than it is protein. I just wanted to go real slow with it. And surprisingly, by the time I got halfway through the salmon, my body was like, just slow down. And I was already going slow. So I just sat back and relaxed again. About an hour later, I was like, oh, I wouldn't mind finishing that other half of the salmon. By the time I finished that, my body was saying, yeah, I'm, I'm quite hungry. So I took myself out into the kitchen again, cooked up the ribeye steak, added some extra butter, salt to taste got through that and then I felt satisfied you know dropped my water and I was done I put the pork chop back in the fridge a few hours later I started to feel hungry again so then that's when I, I started to eat a little bit more and I, I justified eating a little bit more because I think well in this case if my body's asking me for more food it's probably advantageous just to listen to those signals it's not like I was craving sweet I just wanted to eat more meat and I even fancied a little bit of raw cheese so I had a little bit of gray air, which is actually the one that I get has zero lactose so I didn't feel guilty about that I took myself upstairs and, and properly looked for the first time right underneath the stoma and, and I'll show you some pictures you can see the, the improvements. I do believe I've pushed myself past that plateau. It seemingly looks like it's nearly there. I think it's worth mentioning that I was compulsively practicing grounding and exposing my eyes to the light in the morning. I try to do the same when the sun goes down, but sometimes you lose track of time and you think, oh, it's already dark outside and then you try and dim the lights or whatever. I weighed myself before the fast. I weighed just over nine stone, nine stone one. Um, I'll put that up in pounds. I think it's about 127 pounds. In five days of no eating and doing all of this exercise, I only lost two pounds, so which is good. I, did, I wasn't in this to, to lose weight. What I would say is that on day three, I did start to feel quite cold and it didn't help that the, the temperatures dropped quite a bit over here in the UK, certainly for November. I think it felt quite a bit colder, but the fact that I didn't have any food and my body wasn't working in the same way, I was completely empty all the time and I wasn't exactly high body fat to begin with. So I did feel the cold. And so perhaps next time I'll try and time it more strategically with the uh, temperatures, you know, at least maybe look in advance and go, well, okay, maybe it's a good week to fast. Another thing I would say though, my sleep started to get worse 
us going into day four and into the last night's sleep as well. So for a few reasons, I'm quite glad I broke my fast. You know, I think I was getting hungry. I was getting a bit cold and my sleep started to suffer maybe about an hour a night for those last two nights. And so I was quite happy to eat. Um, and I don't think I've made any real mistakes in doing so. It's the longest fast I've done. And again, it was a little bit of an experiment with me anecdotally without a colon, you know, but I am now interested in perhaps going for a week. I think that there's a hell of a lot of benefits, you know, all the miraculous benefits of healing that fasting from food brings. I think it's great mentally and even spiritually. I'm certainly going to do another fast, whether it's going to be a week, 10 days, I don't know. So about 0.5% of ulcerative colitis patients do seem to end up with this skin condition, which is interesting. I think it's a little bit less for people with Crohn's. What I'm trying to wrap my head around is the fact that I don't have ulcerative colitis anymore. I don't have my colon anymore. So it's interesting that I still managed to get this condition somehow. I'm not too sure. Um, it's somewhat idiopathic. Maybe it's to do with the immune system. Maybe it's to do with mold. So yeah, if you know anything about this, this skin condition, I think dogs can get this quite a lot. Drop it in the comments. I'll be very interested if you've got like a link to somewhere where I can learn about it, because obviously this may be an ongoing thing that I have to manage. Sorry if those uh, graphic images were somewhat offensive to you. But yeah, I just wanted to share this. I'm, I'm pretty open I'm not trying to act like I'm you know the picture of health all every day all day forever and I'm going to live to 100 you know I'm, things are very different for me I, I can't imagine I'm optimally healthy without a colon anyway I do my best I'm very open uh, I care about truth and accuracy um, and I just thought this was perhaps an interesting thing to share this has basically been my journey over the last week anyway thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one